Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Annie would like to introduce you to Oliver Alexander, whose profile says he's from Stockholm in Sweden. Hello, he said. Hi, said Annie. Hello, wie ist das Wetter du drüben? He asked in his best German, I mean Swedish. I don't understand German, said Annie. OK, he said. Hello, how is the weather over there? Isn't Google Translate a boon when you're a scammer? Why do you want to know? asked Annie. I'm sorry, I just want to know. So nice to meet you. Oliver Alexander. My name is Oliver Alexander. Yeah, I can see your name, said Annie. Is there a reason why you contacted me? I don't recognise you. The truth is that Facebook suggested a lot of friend to me. So I decided to send you a friend request and to drop a message. I just want to be your friend here on Facebook. Please don't be angry. OK, said Annie. Tell me something interesting about yourself. OK, I work as a medical doctor in Syria. Surprise, honour, surprise, peacekeeping. And I'm also going to get you tire in a couple of weeks. I'm 54 years old. I work as a general doctor. Why are you getting me a tire? asked Annie. I'm sorry, I don't understand, he said. Isn't text-to-speech software wonderful? You said, I'm also going to get you a tyre in a couple of weeks. Why are you getting me a tyre? No, I mean, I'm going to retire in a couple of weeks. I made a mistake. Oh, OK, said Annie. It did seem an odd thing to say. I thought maybe you meant to type it to someone else. No, I just made a mistake. So tell me about yourself. Also, I just want to be your friend. It's like you're busy, but I hope I'm not disturbing you. If I'm disturbing you, you can just tell me. Maybe we can talk later in the day. I live in Shaftesbury in England, she said. I work on the checkouts at our local supermarket. OK, he said. So, have you talked to a military man or a military doctor before? Yeah, online. Have you talked to a supermarket worker before? asked Annie. I don't see how who I talk to is any of your business. No, but you've not answered my question, he said. I don't see how who I talk to is any of your business, she said again. OK, I'm sorry, said our man. I don't even know you, she said. I'm sorry, pardon my manners. And he sent her two photos. I'm sorry, I don't mean to get you angry. I just want to know you better for you to also know more about me. I never knew that you'd be angry with me like you said I'm just a stranger. That's better, said Annie. Thank you for remembering your manners. So, how are you doing, he asked. I'm very well, thanks. So, can I be your friend? Asked our six-year-old. I mean, our mature army doctor. When you say you're a general doctor, do you mean an emergency doctor who assesses patients when they first come to hospital? Yes, he said. That must be very complicated, she said. So, please, can you tell me about yourself? OK, I'm sorry. I should be the one that tell you about myself, Test. I was born and brought up in Miami, Florida. I lost my wife three years ago in a car accident. And I have a daughter who's 13 years old. Her name is Doris, but she's not with me in the car. She's in a boarding school for now. I have grown up twins, said Annie. They're 30. David lives in Salisbury and Susie lives in Bournemouth. Wow, that's very nice. But hope you're hearing from them always. Good morning. How was your night? Hope your night was great. It was absolutely amazing, said Annie. How was yours? My night was great, he said. And thanks for keeping me company. Why are you retiring at 54? She asked. I can't retire until I'm 67. I'm 52 now. Ich habe lang gewartet, he said. Jetzt sind es bis zu 32 Jahre. I'm sorry, I don't know what 32 is in German. Das ist der Grund. What? asked Annie. I'm sorry, but I don't understand, he said. How are you doing today? If you don't understand, why did you type all that? said Annie. I said I've been working for 32 years now, he said. My goodness, you were very young when you qualified. I've been working for 34 years. Yes, I'm very young when I joined the military. My father died when I was six years old. My mum died of cancer. So I was on our adopted by the orphanage. That's very sad, said Annie, thinking maybe she'd try and play it straight. Yes, 
That's true. That's the reason that make me to try my best to make my daughter feel so very happy because I don't want her to feel the same way I feel. Just think about that. He grew up in an orphanage because his parents weren't there for him. How do you think that would make him treat his own children? You can ponder on that. No, I know that she does not have a mum to take good care of her, but I know one day she will have a stepmum that will take good care of her, like she always wish. So you leave her in a boarding school, despite knowing how it feels to be abandoned. I'm not impressed, said Annie. And you're looking for someone else to take care of her, presumably so you don't have to. Obviously, so you don't have to, because you don't. No, he said, in reply to Annie, saying, you leave her in a boarding school despite knowing how it feels. So she's in Syria with you, is she? asked Annie. No, I did not abandon my daughter. I always talk to her. But the truth is that I can't wait to see her, because it has been long that I set my eyes on her. I missed her so very much. But that is the best way that I can keep asking. She's in a boarding school in Scotland. In Scotland? asked Annie. Where in Scotland? St David's College, he said. Where in Scotland is that? St David's College in Llandidno, he said. And if you're not from the UK, Llandidno isn't in Scotland, it's in Wales. I thought you said she's in Scotland, replied Annie. Have you been to visit her in Scotland? Who didn't feel like enlightening him because obviously that's a giveaway for a future potential victim. I have not visited her before, he said. I'm always working and saving life. For 18 months now, I haven't seen her. I miss her a lot. And he sent another photo of a man with a young girl. Please, folk, if you're talking to someone online, think very, very carefully before sending photos of your children. So you have abandoned her, said Annie, in a foreign country where she doesn't know anyone. And you have the barefaced audacity to pretend you don't want her to feel the same way you did. You really are a despicable man. Good morning, he said the next day. How was your night? Hope your night was great. No, I did not abandon her, but in a boarding school, and that will be safe for her. I know that this may be difficult in a boarding school, but most time that I talk to her, she told me that she's very fine, that everything is okay with her. But I'm thanking God, because I will bring together very soon, and I'm going to see her, and she's going to be with me. Then she will not have the time to go to the boarding school any more. Of course you abandoned her, said Annie. Stop making excuses. You've never been to her school. You don't even know where it is. You could at least have sent her to a school near her own so her friends and relatives could visit her instead of sending her to a foreign country. I always talk to my daughter. I did not give any excuse. I love her so very much. She knows that. I'm not impressed, said Annie. Why did you send her to a school in a foreign country where no one can go and visit her? OK, what do you want me to do now? Take a serious look at your attitude, said Annie. That's what. You know what it feels like to be alone as a child. Why did you send her to a school in a foreign country where no one can go and visit her? I know that I'm a terrible father, he said. But the truth is that it's because of my job. I never wanted to send out away to school, but I asked her. She said she'd like to school there. Don't be ridiculous, said Annie. She's a child. I don't believe for one second that she has to be sent to a country whose location even her own father doesn't know. But very soon, I'm going to get you tired. Very soon, then I will spend a lot of time with her that she always wants. She's very smart and intelligent. Change the subject before I get cross again, said Annie. Tell me about your career. Why are you going to get me tired very soon? No, I mean that I'm going to get retired very soon, just in a couple of weeks. So tell me about your kids. They're twins, said Annie. David lives in Salisbury and Susie lives in Bournemouth. Didn't I already tell you that? Wow! That's very nice of you. So I hope you're hearing from them. I see them all the time, said Annie. They're only about half an hour drive away. Maybe 45 minutes to Susie. Wow! That's very nice. And there's no way I would have abandoned them as kids. Tell me about your career. Are you married? He said in reply to Annie saying... Tell me about your career. OK, that has to be the most irrelevant answer ever, she said, copying and pasting. But I've told you about my life and also about my career, he said. What else do you want to know about me? I just want to know if you're still married. Nothing else. Where did you tell me about your career? Asked Annie, I'm divorced. 
I'm sorry about that, he said. Where did you tell me about your career? So what do you like to know about my career? He asked. Where have you worked? What have you done? I've just realised what time it is. I'm off to bed. You can tell me about your career and I'll read it tomorrow. OK, we can talk tomorrow, he said. May the angels from heaven bring the sweetest of all dreams for you. May you have long and blissful sleep, full of happy dreams. Good night, my friend. Err, said Annie, when she got up next morning. I was hoping to wake up and find you told me about your career. You know, where did you work when you first qualified? Which hospitals have you worked in? Is Syria the only place you've worked overseas? Why is this so hard? I've never met a doctor or military person. I wasn't keen to tell you all about their career at great lengths. I'm beginning to wonder if you're just making a story to impress me. So, our man finally came up with his life story. Like I told you earlier, I was born on the 16th of April at Baptist Hospital of Miami. I started A&A Children Academy at 16 and later on continued from Calvary Baptist Church schools. I was in the Borden School, so my parents visit me once in a while. You know, his parents that were dead. My mum was a head teacher, and Dad was in the medical field of the army, and later worked with the gold mining company. I didn't spend much time at home, because I grew up in the orphanage home after my parents parted from me. Later study. I'm also a criminal lawyer at the University of Miami. I was very playful at school, and it affected my academic works. I joined the military academy at the age of 16. I went to Johns Hopkins University in the United States. During his medical training in Johns Hopkins University, I was attracted to surgery. I took a special interest in vascular surgery after watching a Liverpool surgeon, Peter Harris, save someone by operating on their ruptured aortic aneurysm. As a vascular surgeon, he specialises in keyhole techniques, especially for repairs of abdominal aortic aneurysms and distal arterial bypasses. I've really got to Google that. I'll see if I can find it in a minute have worked under the military since I became a doctor. I've been to different countries. I've never tried to impress anyone. And if you feel so, you can call an end to the conversation, respectfully. At last, said Annie, why was that so difficult? Where's Borden School? I haven't heard of it. You must have spent a long time in university if you also qualified as a criminal lawyer. What made you change your mind and go into medicine instead? I'm sure those of you that have English as a first language can see the difference between the bit about Peter Harris, the surgeon, and the rest of what he typed. It's grammatical and it's correctly punctuated. If the person that you're talking to online appears to use a mixture of styles, Google some of it. See what you can find. Here's that bit about Peter Harris, the vascular surgeon. It's on the Buckingham University website. And the person whose biography it's in is Mr David Knott, OBE. I've left it with his name because it's on a publicly accessible website. I also googled the bit about going to the ANA school. That came up on several scam warning websites. Back to the action, and Annie has just asked our man why he changed his mind and went into medicine instead. You should never ask scammers about their career. They have no idea. Our man replied, I lost my mum when I was little because she was not feeling fine. She was suffering from cancer. That's what make me to decide to try my best to save life. OK, said Annie. Why did you study law first? Because that's what I wanted to become, he said. OK, said Annie, and then you changed your mind. You must have spent a long time in uni. Did you do both degrees at Johns Hopkins? Yes, he said. How long were you at uni, she asked. I'm sorry, but I can't remember, he said. But when I was under the military... That's when I have my doctor degree. Can you also tell me about your career? You don't remember how long you were at uni, pulled the other leg, said Annie. No one forgets that. I don't have a career. I work on the checkouts at our local supermarket. I worked in a bakery when I first left school, then in another supermarket while the kids were small. I'd been with Tesco for about 15 years. Try again. How long were you at university? Try I spent three years at Johns Hopkins doing law and then five years there studying medicine or something similar. What do you mean by your doctor degree? Do you mean you also have a PhD? Yes, he said. A PhD in what? 
asked Annie. Oh, Annie, you really shouldn't have asked him that because their relationship is about to become terminal. You really, 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 really are of work to talk to, said Annie. Let's do it one step at a time, shall we? What did you study for your PhD? I think I told you that when I was in the military, that's when I have my doctor degree, a post with my PhD. No, you didn't, said Annie. This is the first time you mentioned doing a PhD. I thought you studied medicine in the military. What did you study for your PhD? Doctor degree, he said. Doctor of what? asked Annie. Not PhD, he said. Oh, FJS, replied Annie. So why did you say yes, it was? How long did you take to study law? This would be so much easier if you just had a proper conversation. When I went to go and study law, after I was done with the law, then I'm not decided to study medicine for eight years. Then when was in the military, that was when I have my master degree, said our illiterate, I beg your pardon, said our highly literate, highly educated doctor of something. Now you've got a master's degree, said Annie. How long did you take to study law? Three years for full-time students, he said. And you became a criminal lawyer at the University of Miami without any further training and no experience. Not that I didn't want it to have any experience, but I started losing interest in it. That was what made me decide to become a doctor. So please, I'm sorry to say this. If you lost interest, why are you a criminal lawyer at the University of Miami? That must be boring for the students having a lecturer that isn't interested in their subject. Not that I'm not interested in law, he said, but I really wanted to save life because when I lose my mum, I lose everything. I lose love, no one to, to feel the same way that I feel. That is what makes me try my best to make a lot of people happy. Stop babbling on about that, said Annie. I'm asking about your work as a criminal lawyer at the University of Miami. Like I said, I'm sorry to say this, but I need to go and check on my patients, which is scammer speak for, oh help, I have no idea what I'm talking about. When you come back, you can tell me about your work as a criminal lawyer at the University of Miami, said Annie. Are you angry with me because I left LOL to go and study medicine? No, replied Annie. I'm waiting ever so patiently for you to tell me about your work as a criminal lawyer at the University of Miami. What do you want to know about it? he asked. What do you do? Lecture? Research? It's like you don't understand anything I'm saying. I'm now a medical doctor. That standard line of all scammers who've tied themselves in knots and have no idea what they're talking about. So he sent a photograph of a doctor. It's like you don't remember what you typed, replied Annie, quoting the bit where he'd said, I'm also a criminal lawyer at the University of Miami. So one last time, tell me about your work as a criminal lawyer at the University of Miami, or is that just a lie to impress me? You can say anything you want to say, he said. Why do you think that I want to impress you? I have no idea, said Annie. Why did you tell me that if it isn't true? I didn't tell you I work on the supermarket checkouts and I also work as a rocket scientist for NASA, but oh dear, I forgot I said that and I'll just pretend I didn't. The irony of that, as usual, went straight over our man's head. It always does. You never told me that you work for a rocket scientist, he said. Exactly, said Annie. Well done. How long have you been working, he asked. Why did you tell me that if it isn't true? Asked Annie. I've been working since I was 18. That is true. I'm not lying. Why would I lie to you? I have no idea, said Annie. Why did you tell me that if it isn't true? Can we just forget about that? No, said Annie. Why did you tell me that if it isn't true? Please, can you stop saying this? You're making me feel like I make the wrong decision in my life. I have no idea, said Annie. Why did you tell me that if it isn't true? Why are you always accusing me of everything? Why did you tell me that if it isn't true? It's a simple question. Please answer it, because I don't like men that lie and then try to pretend they haven't. If you want to insult me, you can go ahead, he said. Why did you tell me that if it isn't true? It's a simple question. You don't believe me. You can say anything you want to say. Why did you tell me this if it isn't true? She said, quoting again, I am also a criminal lawyer at the University of Miami. Because now you're right. I don't believe you. OK, he said. And if you lie about that, how do I know that anything else you've told me is true? A man hopped on an attorney's website. I couldn't find it. And copied and pasted 
environmental constitutional law, law of evidence, criminal law, company law. I'm very upset, said Annie. I thought I'd found a nice intelligent man that I could have an interesting conversation with. Stop copying and pasting. What on earth is environmental constitutional law? Why company law if you're a criminal lawyer? At least copy and paste something that makes sense. He tried calling her, but she didn't realise he'd called because she had the sound turned off. She cried calling him several times. And I'll play you a few of the very short calls. And then, after that, Annie insulted him, which I won't show you, and blocked him. Hello? Hello? Hi. All right. You've got a lot of explaining to do. What have you got to say for yourself? Sure. I said you've got a lot of explaining to do. Right, you've got a lot of explaining to do, so go on. See? I said you've got a lot of explaining to do. I can't hear you. What do you want? What do you want? Why do you insult me? What do you want? And you've got a lot of explaining so to do. do you Are you going to explain? Just because I can't explain anything to you does not mean that you're going to insult me in a different kind of way. I can't, I can't hear what you're saying. I can't hear a word you're saying. I said, why do you insult me? Because you've got a lot of explaining to do. Why were you lying to me? I was not lying. I was just saying the truth. You just cut me up and started insulting me in a different kind of way. I do not like that. You told me you were working as a criminal lawyer at Miami. Then you told me you weren't. Then you told me you yeah, were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, which, of, the, which of those is true? You are working or you are working as a criminal lawyer? And why did you tell yes, me I both? Was working. Yes, yes, yes. Can you let me speak? Yeah, go on. I was working as a criminal lawyer. But that was then. Right. But now, I'm working in Syria. So why did why did you say, why did you say you're working as a criminal lawyer if you are? That was before. That was before. Why did you say? I'll tell you exactly what you said. I am also a criminal lawyer at the University of Miami. That's what you said. Oh, oh, it's like I get it wrong. Now I understand. I'm sorry. Tell me the difference between criminal law and company law. You see? I said, tell me the difference between criminal law and company law. Criminal law is like when you are. Can, can you hear me? I can hear you. Hello? I can hear you. Go on. Right. Hello? Can you hear me? I can. 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 I can hear you. Right. Tell me the difference between criminal law and company law. I said I want to write it to you now. No, I want you. you I want you to. T uh, I want you to tell me now. But please, plus, hello. Tell me now. What is the difference between criminal law and company law? But I just write it to you. No, I don't want you to write it. I want you to tell me because I don't think you know the difference. And I think you're going to copy and paste something off the internet. So I want you to tell me now. Unsurprisingly, that man couldn't tell Annie the difference and got himself blocked. If the person that you're talking to online starts telling you stories that appear to contradict themselves, ask them questions. And if they can't or won't answer you, then there's a very high chance that you're talking to a scammer. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, please share it, please comment down below, please subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you again in another video.